Hello video viewers, you're about to watch me record an episode of my podcast, episode 699. Um, there's not much more for me to say to the video viewers except that I'll try and talk to you in the camera there as much as possible because that's you live in my you live there in the camera. Um, I'll be trying to talk to you making eye contact because we know how important eye contact is. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm reading from notes which are down there. All right. So when I'm looking down there, I hope you know I haven't forgotten about you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think we're going to start. Uh, okay, here we go. Pressing record now. I hope I don't need to edit this stuff. Okay. Hello there. In this episode, the plan is to wish you a happy new year. Happy new year. Uh, welcome back all my regular listeners and maybe some irregular listeners too. And also say a big hello to any listeners who might have just discovered this podcast and who are wondering what it's all about. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're going, what's this? What's this podcast? What's this all about? What's going on? Um, I normally do episodes like this at the start of the year because I'm recording this in January 2021. Um, I normally record episodes like this at the start of the year um, during the new year period uh, because it's normal to turn over a new leaf, which is an expression which means to, to make a fresh start. So it's normal to kind of turn over a new leaf, to make a fresh start, perhaps make some New Year's resolutions, and generally try to pick up some good habits for the year to come. Is that you? Are you in that kind of frame of mind at the moment? I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to make New Year's resolutions, and I'm going to try to um, develop better habits, which I hope to maintain throughout the coming 12-month period, at which point I will then reassess and make new New Year's resolutions. Or maybe you're one of those pe people who's just like, no, no, it's just all the same. <laughs> no New Year's resolutions. I tried that once in 1998 and it didn't work. So I've never done it since. I don't know. Maybe that's you. Um, so anyway, working on, like making a fresh start at the beginning of the year, I suppose for you watching this or listening to this, um, that includes working on your English and trying to find good listening resources to help you do that. By the way, audio listeners, I'm videoing this as an experiment. I say as an experiment, I say that because I'm not completely sure if the video is going to work properly. It's all a bit complicated, but check my YouTube channel. You might find that um, this video is also available on YouTube. So, I, you know, I can't be completely sure because if something goes wrong with the video, then obviously I won't be uploading the video, but I'll still upload the audio. But I don't know when I'm going to know if the video is it's complicated, isn't it? Anyway, try not to get distracted, Luke. I'm trying not to get distracted. Okay, so let me continue. In this episode, I'd like to welcome you to Luke's English Podcast or welcome you back to Luke's English Podcast. Uh, just summarise what this podcast is all about, restate my objectives for doing this, and generally make sure that we are all on track for a good year of podcasting and learning English in 2021. So I've decided to answer some frequently asked questions. These are the questions that people typically ask me, or these are questions that people frequently ask me or typically ask me, or questions that I think are uh, normally uh, in people's minds when they find out that I have a podcast for learning English and they want to know more. Oh, you've got a podcast for learning English? Oh, really? Uh, oh, what, what, uh, we, what, what, you know, all those what, where, who, all those questions. That's what I'm trying to answer here. So during the episode, you will learn or be reminded of, uh, of what the main ideas are for this podcast. What teaching principles this is all based on. What my methods are. And I do have methods. There is some method to the madness. Um, you can also find out what you can expect from my episodes in general, how you can use them to improve your English, and also some information about Me Too. Um, that's Me Too, not the Me Too movement. That's like, what, 2018? Uh, I don't know. Tangents, lots of tangents. Sometimes I get distracted by other ideas. Focus, Luke. 
That's one of my New Year's resolutions for 2021. Just try to focus. So, okay. Also, I'm going to tell you a few things about me too. Uh, because um, basically, I think it's a good idea to get to know the person you're listening to, isn't it? I've always found as a teacher that it really helps when I put my personality uh, into my English lessons. Uh, it just seems to make things more enjoyable and effective for the learners. Not because I have an award-winning personality or anything, but just that I think learning a language is a deeply personal process. And so it makes sense to have a more personal approach to teaching it as well as learning it. It helps if you know who I am, basically. It gives you context, it brings the language to life, and it's just more fun too, isn't it? I hope so. I hope you agree. If you like, you can, as you listen to this, right, if you like, uh, you can imagine that we're just in a cafe or something, even though I'm doing all the talking, and you're just sitting there, and I'm doing all the talking. But you can pause me at any time, if you want, and put your thoughts into words if you want. But really, really, you can, and that feels strange, but you could just press the pause button. And if you want, you could just say, this is an interesting episode, isn't it? Luke seems to be having fun. He's got some important things he wants to talk to us about. And yet, at the same time, he seems to get distracted by other ideas that come in. I wonder how long this episode will be, you might be thinking. Put those ideas and thoughts into words if you want. You could just press pause and make this a bit more interactive. Or just sit back, chill out, and just watch and listen. Um, all right. So um, where was I? Yeah, so even though I'm doing all the talking, you can pause me at any time and you can put your thoughts into words if you want. That's right, talk to yourself. It won't make you crazy. Look, I said it, so it's okay. I said, you can. You can talk to yourself. If people if the people, people start knocking on your door, it's like, he, she's... He, He's talking to himself again, or she's talking to herself again. You can just say, no, 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 it's all right. Luke Thompson told me it was okay. And then I'm sure that they'll be convinced. <laughs> um, so put your thoughts into words sometimes in English. I can't hear you or respond to you, but it's better than nothing, isn't it? Yes, that is that is the least you can say about my podcast. <laughs> well, it's better than listening to nothing, isn't it? <laughs> I know how to sell myself, he said sarcastically. By the way, other podcasts are available, of course. As you probably know, there are quite a lot of other podcasts for learners of English, um, including um, ones by the BBC and other ones by other people. And they're great. But obviously, I hope you listen to my podcast, don't I? So what's this podcast? How can it help you with your English? Who are you listening to? or watching, in the case of those people who are watching this, probably on YouTube, the tube of you, YouTube. Um, who? What is this podcast? How can it help you with your English? Who are you listening to? Those are the sorts of questions that we'll be covering. But also plenty of other random bits and pieces too. Okay, right, so there you go. Um, I would normally do a little promotion for Luke's English Podcast Premium, so I'll do that now. It's going to take... Less than a minute. Okay, did you know, listeners, that I have a uh, a premium subscription? It's an audio, uh, basically like an audio podcast, extra content in which I specifically teach you vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. And I get to the point a lot more in the premium content. I really do. I try to get to the point and focus on teaching you language as much as I can. Okay, uh, the episodes are available in my app. That's the Luke's English Podcast app on your phone. You can just, I'd show you on my phone, but it's going to take too long. Uh, just go to your phone, app store, search for Luke's English Podcast app. Okay, and you can listen to the premium content in there. You can also find it online. Basically, to get all the information that you will need ever in your life, um, not really, to get all the information you need about the premium content, go to teacherluke.co.uk slash premium info. Right, and at this point, I think we should start the jingle properly. Here we go. You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello. 
Hello, dear, dear listeners. Happy New Year, everyone. And welcome back to the podcast. I hope you had a fairly good holiday period. Um, as good as it can be during this mad, mad time that we're all living in. When's the world going to go back to normal then? When's that going to happen? We don't know, do we? Was it even normal in the first place? Probably not. Um, in any case, I hope that you're well and that you've started 2021 in a reasonably positive frame of mind and that you're ready to embark on some new audio adventures with me and my podcast. If you're a brand new listener, then welcome. I really hope you simply enjoy listening to me talking to you or talking with my guests in English in these episodes. I hope that this will help you to get regular English listening practice into your life and that you enjoy it too, because enjoying your listening practice is so important. This will help you to listen regularly, to listen for longer periods of time, and to listen long term in your life as well, obviously, if you enjoy it. It's going to keep, help to keep you coming back to English. We all know that it's very important and useful to listen to plenty of clear, natural English spoken at a fairly normal speed, focusing on a variety of topics. Might also be useful to listen to unclear <laughs> English, not unnatural English, but sometimes it's good to listen to English that's like really hard to understand and difficult to hear, like, for example, stuff spoken in, spoken with strong accents or stuff over the telephone and things like that. That stuff is also good too, because you've got to train yourself to be able to try and understand uh, English in less than perfect conditions. But anyway, it is important to listen to loads of clear, natural English at a normal speed, uh, focusing on a variety of topics. We want variety. Um, reading is good, obviously. Um, studying grammar, vocabulary and pronunciation, that's good too, of course. Doing plenty of speaking practice is really important. Um, watching videos in English is helpful. But don't underestimate the importance of just listening to English for as long as possible each time. You know, more than, dare I say it, more than six minutes. Uh, that's what this podcast aims to help you to do, at a very minimum. I just want you to be able to listen more. There is more to it than that, of course. There's a lot more. But basically, I want you to do more listening in English. And so, da-da, that's what this podcast is about. The first and most basic aim of this podcast is to help you to get more English into your life through listening to the spoken word, listening to English as it's spoken naturally by me in this case, and my guests if I have them. So let's go through my list of frequently asked questions. These are questions, that I just wrote this list uh, this morning basically. So let's go through my list of frequently asked questions, which will form the backbone of this episode, which is probably quite long. Can I can I just ramble for two minutes, please? No one's going to stop me. I'm going to do it. Uh, what? What did I want to say? Yeah, January. It's so grey outside. Can you? Act I, I worked hard to try and get some light into this room, but it's very hard. I have one window up there. I'm talking to the video viewers, I guess, I suppose, there. Another thing is, I might cough, <coughs> excuse me, like that. I might cough. And that's because during, like, the post-Christmas period, like, basically, for last week, I was quite ill. Um, I didn't have COVID-19, thank goodness. That would have been a nightmare, um, it, mainly for the inconvenience of having to like stay at home my wife me and my daughter we would have had to stay home for 14 days or something which would have been really tough um but no so it wasn't covid i had a covid test i don't know what it was just a cold or a flu or something you know headaches cold shivers cough that stuff maybe a bit of flu so a winter virus so i i have been a bit unwell uh, so if I do cough, sometimes that's why. And everyone's now going, that's all right, Luke. That's fine. Don't worry about it. You're always apologizing for things that haven't even happened. Okay. <laughs> so question one, what is this podcast? I think you know now, right? It's a podcast for learners of English. Cool. 
Uh, yeah, cool. Don't forget to smash that like button, okay, guys? Like and subscribe. Um, so what's this podcast? It's a podcast for learners of English. I've been doing it for nearly 12 years now. That's right. I started doing Luke's English podcasts back in April 2009 um, and uh, haven't stopped really. I mean, there may, may have been a couple of periods where I didn't upload stuff for a few months, but generally speaking, I've been constantly doing this for 12 years now. Um, yes, that's right. Um, it's Yeah, the podcast is nearly 12 years old. The podcast is nearly a teenager. It's nearly a teenager, this podcast. What is the podcast going to be like? When it does become a teenager, when we get into 13, 14, 15 years, what's the podcast going to be like then? If it's like a human teenager, it could get a little bit complicated, couldn't it, in the next few years? You know, like, for example, you'll list, you will be going, oh, let's listen to Luke's English podcast. At this point, let's imagine the podcast is 13 years old. Let's listen to Luke's English podcast. Luke, okay. And then I, my the teenage version of Luke's English podcast will just be like... Just leave me alone, probably. Anyway, so this is a podcast for learners of English. You got the idea. 12 years into it, I am now. It's doing It's doing all right. It's doing well. People listen to this all over the world. It's great. I love doing this. This is, this is what I love doing. Uh, so next question. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, it's a podcast for learning English, but is it for me? Well, it's for everyone, but it might be difficult if... A, you're lower than an intermediate level. So if you're intermediate level or below, it's going to be probably too difficult to be able to follow it. Intermediate as well, if you're intermediate, it might be hard. You'll have to be extra motivated. <clears throat> Nearly coughed. You'll have to be extra motivated. Okay, um, so it's really designed probably for upper intermediate and advanced and beyond. Some people who listen to this are native speakers, in fact. Some people who listen to this are uh, uh, non-native English speakers, people who've learnt English as a second language or maybe learnt it in adulthood. And they are, but they've, they've got really good English, so they're proficient. I have a lot of English teachers listening to this too. Or you're just, I don't know, somewhere in the kind of upper intermediate advanced sort of area. But really, I mean, it, it's for everyone. Even if you're, I've had, I've had lower intermediate or pre-intermediate students start listening to my podcast, and f they found it difficult at the beginning to understand everything and to concentrate for a long time. But those people have got better and better and better. So you can start at any time. Basically, who's this for? It's for anyone who wants to listen to it and who is able to continue listening to it. All right, so there you go. Um, so there's that. It's also maybe this will be difficult if you're n if you're a really visual learner, and I say that because most of the time my episodes are audio episodes, right? So um, those people who are visual learners might struggle um, with that. I mean, I say that because like my wife, my wife is French, by the way. English isn't her first language. My wife doesn't listen to podcasts even in French. She doesn't listen to my podcast because she doesn't need to. She lives with me. It's basically just Luke's English podcast all the time. Oh, God, imagine that. You, cannot, you can't turn it off. <laughs> um, but she doesn't listen to podcasts. Even in French, she doesn't listen to podcasts, which I kind of, like, what? You know, I can't believe it because I love podcasts so much. I listen to them too. But she just can't really do it. She, she feels that she has to close her eyes or, or something or, or just do nothing else. She When she's listening, she can only listen. She can't do other things, which is not, you know, she can normally multitask. She's normally very good. She can talk on the phone, look after our daughter and maybe like order things on the internet all at the same time. Whereas I can't. If I did that, I'd burn the, you know, I'd burn the child. No, I'd burn the food. Was food involved? I don't know. <laughs> I would I would say the stupid things on the phone. I'd order the wrong stuff and um, my child would... Uh, I don't know what my child would do. They would end up watching cartoons, which I wouldn't want. A lot of rambling in my episodes. 
Um, but anyway, this podcast is for anyone who wants to listen and who enjoys listening. Next question. How long have you been doing this, Luke? Well, I've already answered that since 2009. Next question. Who are you, Luke? <laughs> I don't know if you would ask it like that. Who are you? Like I've just wandered onto your property. Like, who are you? Get off my property. Who are you, Luke? Uh, I mean, and this is you asking this question. I mean, can you tell us a bit more about yourself, your background and your career? Uh, so that we can feel totally confident that you know what you're talking about and that you're not just some guy who can speak English. Okay, I'll tell you something about myself. Let me begin by telling you about my background. There's like a map on the wall, a guitar, some shelves. That's my background. Yeah. That was a joke. You are everyone okay? Yeah, right. So, no, no, my personal background is that I, I'm from the UK. I'm from England. Uh, born in, basically grew up in West London. And then when I was about 10 years old, moved to the Midlands in England. I speak with probably received pronunciation, RP. That's my accent. Just receipt, standard received pronunciation. Uh, what else? I'm an English teacher. I've been teaching English for nearly 20 years now. Um, I've got a CELTA and a DELTA. Those are two teaching qualifications. Um, what else do I need to say? I lived in uh, the beginning of my career. I spent two years living and working in Japan and taught English there. Um, and then after that, um, came back to London and taught English in London and um, started doing this podcast. I also do stand-up comedy as well, um, although I can't do that at the moment, of course, because all the comedy clubs are all closed because of bloody COVID-19. Um, so that's who I am. Um, all right. So basically, yes, I've been to university. I, I'm, I got a degree. I studied at university and got a degree. I went to university in Liverpool. I studied media and cultural studies at university. Most people listening to this know this stuff already, I suppose. Anyway, so there you go. I'm a qualified teacher with lots of experience. I know what I'm doing and I know what I'm talking about, even if it doesn't look like it sometimes or sound like it. <laughs> there is method in my madness. Okay. What madness, Luke? This is all, there's no madness here. You might be thinking, this all makes total sense to me. Good. Next question. Luke, will it really help my English to listen to this, to listen to you talking or to watch your videos or whatever? Will this really help uh, my English? And the answer is yes. Yes, it will. Um, and what can I say? What more can I say? Well, you might ask me now, well, how do you know, Luke? Well, here are the reasons why I think that it will help you with your English if you regularly listen to this podcast. Not, you know, not just one episode, not just 10 minutes of one episode. Obviously, 10 minutes of one episode is better than nothing, but I'm talking about listening to a lot more than that. You've got to listen to as much as you can, basically, as regularly as you can. And you'll find that over time, as you listen to this more and more, as it becomes just a habit in your life, when you decide that you're actually maybe even addicted to listening to this podcast, which people tell me is the case, they say, I started listening to your podcast a while ago, and now I have to say, I'm totally addicted to it, which is fine, because I think being addicted to this podcast is is totally fine. I don't, medically, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's healthy. It's a good addiction to have. It's not like crack, which is definitely bad for you, just in case you were wondering, <laughs> just in case you were thinking, I might try start doing crack this year. <laughs> Don't do that. That's a very bad idea. But listening to this podcast and getting addicted to this is great. It's, it can only be good for your English. Um, so anyway, how do I know? First-hand accounts from listeners, um, listeners who contact me in various ways and tell me. I've had many, many different first-hand accounts from people who tell me just that, that I've helped them with their English, that it's been a huge, it's made a huge difference. Okay, it can help you in the sense that you're getting English from it, you're getting exposure, you're just listening to English, you're consuming English. Okay, that can help. It also becomes a source of English where you can actually pick out 
language. You can pick out vocabulary. You can copy my, my accent if you want to. You can sort of learn about pronunciation just from listening to it and grammar as well. So there's, you can just listen. You can notice language while you're listening. Um, and also, um, what else? What was I thinking? Um, I can't remember. I lost my I lost my train of thought there. I'm trying to th think. So yes, you can. It's a source of English, and also that's it. I also obviously will teach you English from time to time, and I I do that um, very specifically in in the premium uh, subscription. But also I talk to you about learning English. I talk to you about ways of thinking about learning English and ways of approaching the learning of English and having the right attitude. So that can help you too. Hopefully I can turn you into a, a better learner of English. That's the idea. So anyway, first-hand accounts from listeners, people who tell me that my podcast has made a big difference to their English. Secondly, common sense. I mean, it's common sense, isn't it? Of course, it's about a billion times more effective. Listening to this regularly or anything else um, uh, is about a billion times more effective than listening to nothing at all, isn't it? Plus, what else are you going to do? <laughs> well, you could watch Netflix with subtitles. And yes, please do that too. But switch the subtitles on and off sometimes. You could um, read books. Um, in English, and you should definitely do that, you know, both graded and ungraded books, if you're ready for the ungraded ones. Speak English with people who you know, who speak English, okay? Yes, that's obviously vital. Take English classes, which is also a good idea, as long as you take part properly, and you'd still take responsibility for your own learning. So, that, you know, there's tons of other things you can do you can do all of those things. You can also study from books and, you know, there's many things. You can use different flashcard apps and Duolingo and there's a million different things you can do. Are you doing them all? I don't know. Maybe you are. But in any case, I don't want to make this too complicated. All I'll say is listen to my podcast regularly and it will help you and, and it will help you with your English. It will. I know I just, I'm, I made a mistake there with my voice. Did you hear that? I went, I'm, sometimes I slip up. We do this. It is totally normal. Even native speakers, you, uh, you're a native speaker of your own language. I'm, I'm sure that you don't speak flawlessly all the time, do you? No, I sometimes make mistakes as well, which is fine. Um, but anyway, listen to my podcast regularly and it will help you with your English if you do it long term. Um, also, I know that this is true because of academic studies I've done. You know, while preparing my teaching qualifications, I read a lot of books. Yeah, check me out. I read a lot of books and other texts based on proper academic studies into how people learn languages. And, you know, those things told me, you know, people learn English when they listen to it a lot. Who would have thought? Um, also, my professional experience after having met many thousands of learners of English from many places and working with them closely to help with their English, observing what works for them, what people respond to, and the realities of learning a language, all of those things have shown me that regularly listening to something like my podcast can help your English a lot. I could go into that more, as I have done in previous episodes in the past, but that's all I'll say at this point. Um, I'm not. That's not the end of the episode. I'm just saying that's all I'll say about why this is a good idea to listen to this. Okay, next thing, next question. Will it help me improve my grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation, Luke, or is it just like just listening skills? Um, well, yeah, of course, it's going to help you with your grammar, vocab, and pronunciation, both directly when I specifically teach you grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation, which I used to do in free episodes a lot more regularly. I'd still do that from time to time. And in the middle of episodes, sometimes um, a phrase will just come up and I'll explain it. Uh, but anyway, 
yes, when I teach you language directly, you can obviously learn it like that. But you can also learn grammar, vocab, and pronunciation indirectly just through exposure, just through listening to this. The more you listen, the more you are kind of um, sub... What's the word? What, how shall I put this? That essentially, listening to English a lot leaves a kind of imprint. This is not a sci very scientific way of putting it. But basically, how are you supposed to know how the language works if you never listen to it or you never read it? I think just listening and reading a lot, consuming a lot, is a great way to kind of learn grammar and, and, and pick up vocab almost on an unconscious level. That sounds a bit crazy, but it's true. Okay, there you go. Um, all of that, you know, exposure is, is very good. And also, I can help you think about the way that you learn, which can make you a more skillful and effective learner. So, yes, it can help you with your grammar, vocab, and, and pronunciation. Next question is from you would be this. Okay, then, um, Luke, uh, what's your method then, Professor Thompson? Okay, well, uh, the five L's, the five S's, the five P's. You're thinking, what are those? The five L's, listening, 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 and listening. The five S's, speaking, 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 and speaking. The five P's, basically, practice, 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 and practice. Um, it is a question of... Um, time and practice, okay? Doing lots of listening, doing lots of speaking, time and practice. Being a smart learner, okay? Uh, using certain clever techniques to help your learning more, be more effective. Listen to other episodes in my archive to find out some of those things. Uh, the five M's, that's motivation, 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 and motivation. You've got to work on your motivation. I, I'm here to try and help you with that. Um, discipline is also an important thing. Discipline is something that sometimes I don't mention, but you do have to be disciplined. Um, anyway, and, and commitment as well. But my method... Um, it's, you know, these ideas underpin my method. Essentially, what I like to do is, as well as just teaching you the language, I want to just help you to do more listening and do more, um, um, I'd say do more speaking, but it's, it's listening, isn't it? I want to, what am I trying to say? Not completely prepared. Okay, that's all right. So, in terms of the method, yeah, it's based on the idea that listening a lot, I, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself now, that's the problem. Um, essentially, if you're motivated, if you are interacting with English regularly, if you're listening to it a lot, if you're reading it a lot, then that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. It's time and practice. Time plus practice multiplied by motivation. Okay, these are the things I want to help you with. So in terms of time, you need to listen more. You need to listen more regularly, okay? So listening more, hopefully my podcast can help you to listen to more. My episodes are quite long. The reason for that is I've got lots of stuff to say. I don't want to just do it in just six minutes. I think that it's more, you know, there's you can gain a lot more from listening to something that has a longer flow. Uh, and, you know, if you're still listening, that's good. You've been listening for about 30 minutes, right? You see the way this works? The idea is I just want you to listen longer. Longer is better, more, the, the more the merrier. And so really, in one way, that's all I'm trying to help you to do. I'm just trying to produce content that I hope makes it easier for you to get more listening into your life, either by making it fun, by making it funny, uh, by making it just simply interesting, because I'm talking about a topic that's interesting. I try to make it personal, which, as I said before, I find that that helps people to stay focused and stay engaged, because we are all people. We all have sort of emotional reactions to things, and we like human connections. A grammar book although very useful and is full of very important information, doesn't have that kind of human connection, does it, usually? And so therefore, unless you're very good at studying and you love it, using a grammar book can be a bit boring, can't it? 
And what happens is you buy the book, you feel good because you bought the book, and then you just can't really get into it. You just can't really um, use it regularly, right? Because it's boring. I just don't want this to be boring. That's the main thing. Uh, there are many ways to approach language learning. You have to choose one that works for you and that helps to helps you to keep doing it even when it's tough. So the basic version is get as much English into your life as possible and make it meaningful. Hopefully I can help by giving you something you enjoy and want to listen to. The more complex version would be that you have to be a conscious learner too. Notice structures and phrases that I use. Notice pronunciation, how I say things. Try to record them like note them down or remember them. Understand them in context. So when you hear me use a phrase, you can use the context in which I'm saying it to help you understand it. Rather than just going through some phrase list or even a dictionary, which is just phrases that they have no context around them. Words and phrases don't exist in a vacuum. They only mean anything when they are helped by all the rest of what's being said around that phrase. So hopefully talking to you like this provides you with much more context, which helps you to helps to support your ability to notice vocab, um, understand it and remember it. Um, okay, you, you might need to record phrases that you've picked up from me. I mean, write things down as I, you know, record them in that way, or maybe record them on, with an audio device if you want. Um, mm -hmm. My premium content is designed specifically to help you do the more complex stuff. I cut out a lot of the annoying work and just put it all on a plate for you in the premium stuff. Just basically all you, in, in those premium episodes, all you need to do is just listen, follow the PDFs that you get and do what I tell you to do, which basically means do the memory tests and repeat after me when we do pronunciation drills. But there you go. I mean, that's the main, those are the main ideas behind what I'm doing. I could go, you know, I could go on and on about it a lot more. I could start naming sort of academic studies and things like that. I won't. Um, but it's not just a person talking, okay? Um, hopefully I've developed this, the ability after nearly 20 years of teaching uh, to be able to talk in a way that you can follow if you're a learner of English. And that makes a huge difference. If you can understand 80% of what's being said, then it helps you a lot to, to then improve and work on that 20%. You learn, Stephen Krashen, you know, respected, often quoted uh, um, language acquisition theorist, said that we learn languages when we understand them. It's a very, it's it's just, it can just simply be very, very helpful and healthy for your English to listen to someone that you understand. Mm-hmm, okay. Next question. Can I really learn English on my own only by listening to you, Luke? So I could just listen to you regularly for, for ages and then ping, I'm just gonna be able to speak like you and all that stuff. Um, no, not really. There's a lot of other things you need to do as well. Like I said before, practicing the speaking and and putting yourself in different situations and learning how to use English in those situations, working on grammar, you know, um, and so on, uh, specifically. Um, but I, I always recommend my podcast as part of a balanced diet, okay? And, and that does include some other things especially plenty of speaking practice with real people, probably qualified teachers, hopefully, who can help give you bits of feedback and correct your errors, or at least having regular conversations with, you know, with human beings in order to practice using English for communicative purposes, because it's not just words and grammar and pronunciation. It's how you're using those language systems to actually communicate with people um, okay. English is not something you know, it's something you can do. You should think of it like that. Okay. Um, also speaking with people just helps you develop the social side 
of using English for communication. I should also mention writing and reading, of course. You know, I talk about speaking and listening quite a lot. Writing and reading, they are things as well. But since this is an audio podcast, we focus mainly on the spoken version of English. Next question is, what level is this for? I think I've already said that. I mentioned that already. It could be any level at all, depends on the individual. But I imagine upper intermediate to advanced is probably the sweet spot. And above, definitely. Um, you might be thinking to yourself, should I do anything else other than just listening to you, Luke? Um, yeah, I mean, as I said before, balanced diet, you should be doing other types of study as well on top if you really want to do this properly. Uh, but li just listen as a bare minimum. But in terms of like being a, a listener of this podcast, um, is there anything else you need to do? Not much more. If you like, you can share your thoughts in the comments section on my website, teacherluke.co.uk. You can practice little bits of writing there and you can chat with other listeners. But as a listener to my podcast, you can just just listen. That's fine. Next, next question. Luke, your episodes are quite long, aren't they? Aren't they too long, in fact? Um, this is an age-old question. Here's basically, I'm going to try and give you the very brief version to all of these questions. I will try to be as concise as I can. How's the, how's the video? Let me just check that everything's still working here. Okay, it is. Okay, so episodes are long. Yes, they are. So first of all, you don't listen, you don't need to listen to the episode, the entire episode in one big go. You can break it up into pieces. If you're listening using a podcast app, you know, and even Spotify does this as well, just pause the podcast when you need to stop, when you get to work. Let's say you're listening on the way to work. When you get to work, just pause the podcast, do your day of work, and then when you come back, just press play again, okay? I know, you might have lost track of exactly where you were, but it's up to you to just think to yourself, just before you press pause, just think what's going on in this episode at this moment, and then press pause and then continue. I know it would be perfect, wouldn't it, if this podcast was exactly the same length as your commute to work, but you know, I don't know how long it takes you to get to work. Um, yeah, but okay, my episodes are pretty long, but that, that's fine. You know, I honestly think it's fine. Um, so many of my listeners tell me that they love it when the episodes are long. They want episodes to be longer. They don't want shorter episodes. If you want shorter stuff, just press pause after 10 minutes. Um, yeah, too long? Maybe. Maybe some people struggle to focus and they can't concentrate for this long in another language. I understand that. I try my best to, to help you focus and to help it to help to make it easier. You know, I hopefully it's not too tough for you. But I totally understand if it's difficult. But if you're motivated, if you really want to keep listening, then you will find a way. And as I said, you can just pause and come back and check out the rest at a later time. That's fine. Okay, don't be put off by when you look at my episodes and think, oh my God, an hour, an hour and a half. It will fly by. If you're listening, if you're listening properly, if you're really paying attention and you're making an effort to like be into the subject, that hour, hour and a half will go by really quickly. It'll be too short, in fact. I just hope you enjoy my podcast. If you really enjoy it, it shouldn't be a problem. But that's up to you, whether you enjoy it, really enjoy it or not. I do my best. Um, Next question. Are there transcripts for these episodes, Luke? Oh, this is a complicated one. I'm always trying to work on transcripts. Um, so for the most part, no, there isn't. Um, but there's a lot, a lot to say on this. So mostly, no, my episodes um, don't have full transcripts. Although often I will transcribe the introduction part and the ending part, especially when I have a guest on the podcast. Also, often when I'm on my own like this, I will write a lot of the stuff I'm saying, but then there's a lot of other stuff that's not written that I say that's unprepared stuff, you know. But anyway, check the page for each episode on my website, teacherluke.co.uk, and you'll find that a lot of the episodes, although they might not have a full transcription of every single word, a lot of them do have a lot of 
um, the content transcribed. And also a lot of notes, like there might be vocabulary notes of key phrases that have been used in the episode and things like that. I try to provide you with as much stuff in the form of text as possible. That's the first point. Second point is some of the older episodes do have full transcripts. And you can check the um, website to find out more about that. And the th uh, third point is that there is a transcription project which is done by members of my audience. It's called the, um, the, the Transcription Project. The team of people who work on episodes uh, of the podcast is called the Orion Team. Anyone can be a member of the Orion Team. Okay, Orion, that's because O-R-I-O-N. Orion is a, a constellation of stars in the night sky, and the people who work in the Transcription Project are stars as well. So there's the Orion Transcription Team, headed... Uh, by Antonio from Spain, who, um, whenever I say he's in charge, he's the manager, he's normally very modest about it. He's not, you know, he, he's very modest about it. But he is the one who essentially looks after the transcripts. If you're interested in getting involved in the transcription project, again, just go to my website. Website? I've only got one. Um, go to my website. In the menu, transcripts and click transcript collaboration. You can read all about it there. Essentially, it means you, that you can just take a three minute chunk of an episode and transcribe it, or listeners are transcribing uh, my episodes by doing three minute chunks each at a time. It, and and it's, surprising, it's a surprisingly quick process. They will produce transcripts for entire episodes like that. Then they invite more advanced level listeners to proofread those transcripts. It's an incredibly long process and complex. But the people who do the transcribing, they tell me that it's really good for your English. It's like really tough, intensive English practice. So people trans you know, write the transcripts as best they can. Then they get proofread by other listeners. And the final part of the process is that I need to try and find some way of getting an absolutely correct final um, final proof read version of each transcript. Um, it's difficult for me to do that. But at the moment, there are loads of transcriptions of previous episodes that are probably about 95% correct because they've been proof read by really good uh, listeners who've got an excellent level of English. So check out the website, transcripts, cr transcript collaboration. You can find all the information there and you can access all those proofread transcripts. But transcripts are, you know, it's it, it's difficult to produce transcripts for long episodes like this. The I think the fourth point I need to I want to make about transcripts is that I'm I'm working I'm currently working on new ways to try and develop and and provide transcripts and that includes using new software that I've recently discovered that helps to uh, automatically transcribe episodes and I can actually edit the episode the audio of the episode by editing the transcript anyway I've got I've got new ideas coming transcripts are really important for learners of English because it allows you to read or at least see the words that you're hearing and that helps you to know how those words are spelled, what those words actually are, and it basically helps you to connect the written and the spoken versions of the language, which are difficult to put together, aren't they? Because, you know, there is a discrepancy between the two. So, but using transcripts can really help to fix that issue. So transcriptions, transcripts are, yeah, some, some episodes have transcripts available. Some episodes just have vocabulary notes. Uh, some transcripts are not completely proofread yet and I'm working at um, improving that uh, in the future. Next question. Luke, what's your accent? I think I've mentioned that. Basically, I speak with standard British received pronunciation, more or less, which is basically the sort of standard version of English. It doesn't have a, a, a specific region. Next question. Do you have, do you only have native English speakers on your podcast? Um, well, I do have um, guests. Uh, most of the time, my guests have English as a first language. But sometimes I talk to people who have learned English in adulthood. So sometimes I have guests who have English as a second language. Because these people are extremely inspiring. And they've done what so many people want to do. 
and that's learn English to a decent level. And they have great insights into the process of learning English. And it's also very important for you to listen to non-native English speakers speaking English too, because it's vital to hear a variety of English being spoken in your life. English is a very diverse language. There are many people around the world using it and speaking it in slightly different ways, both as a first language and as, and as a second language, or third or whatever, fourth. Uh, how many numbers are there? Hmm, they just go on forever, don't they? <laughs> how many languages are there? I don't know. Anyway, it's important for you to be able to understand all these different varieties of, of English, both the native and non-native versions. And this is true for the different accents and dialects in native English speakers too. You should become accustomed to hearing English spoken with various regional accents. If you only ever listen to my standard RP, which is probably very clear to your ears, you might not be able to understand others. For example, if you only ever listen to me and then you actually, you know, go to England, you'll find that people speak quite differently. I'm not saying that I don't speak naturally. I do. But not everyone speaks like me. And so if you're only exposed to me or the way I speak English, you know, your English won't be stronger. See what I mean? Sounds like I'm saying, don't listen to me because your English won't be stronger. That's not the message. The message is, of course, listen to me, but also it's important to get a variety. And I do try to provide you with a variety in my episodes, uh, either with guests or by listening to audio recordings, you know, uh, uh, and so on. Okay, that's listening to native speakers with different accents. Also, it's important to listen to non-native speakers as well. Let's say speakers from, you know, Spain or Russia or China or Afghanistan or, you know, God knows wherever it could be. France, where I live. Like I have my wife on the podcast sometimes and she's French. Um, and there's value to that as well. I'm not saying that, you know, most of the time it's me and my guests who are from the United Kingdom or members of my family who are also are from the UK um, or guests from other, you know, English speaking countries. Most of the time it's that. But occasionally it's a few non native speakers as well on the podcast. Um, <laughs> sometimes learners of English will say that they only want received pronunciation and they see other accents as somehow being lower forms of English with less value. I don't agree with this, of course. The idea that a regional accent, let's say if you're from Liverpool or Birmingham or Manchester or something, um, the idea that a regional accent makes you sound uneducated or even lazy or something, that idea deserves to stay in the 1950s where it belongs, in my opinion. Having said that, let me put my cards on the table and be as clear as possible. What accent should you develop in English? This is a question people ask me all the time. Okay, so the first thing is you need to be clear. That's the that's your first concern. Be clear when you're communicating with people. People need to understand you. So work on that first. It's a good idea to pick a certain accent which you can use as a model. Which accent are you going to pick? This is the accent or so that one accent that you pick as your model, this becomes the accent or pronunciation that you can aim for and try to copy. Which accents are going to be? Which one? Well, why not choose received pronunciation? It's a perfectly good choice, as most people will be familiar with it. If you have a particular reason for wanting to copy a regional accent, then go for it. I love all the different regional accents, and I love to hear them, and I love to try and copy them from time to time, not to people's faces, because that would be, oh, you're from Birmingham. All right, how's it going from Birmingham? No, I wouldn't do that, of course. That's ridiculous. But it's fun to play with accents. Uh, oh, focus. What was I saying? Uh, why why choose RP? Well, um, I just think it's probably a good idea to go for the standard. Why not? This seems like common sense. Uh, but, you know, I, I still want you to respect and love the regional variations of English too. I guess this is what I'm, I'm talking about. Maybe maybe you live in, in, in a certain part of the United Kingdom. Maybe you live in the north of England and you want to kind of to speak in the same way that your neighbours do. Uh, or maybe you just love a certain regional accent for personal reasons and you've decided that this is the one for you. In, in those cases, obviously go for it. 
Try to keep things natural if you can. Um, I could talk about this more, but I won't go on about it too much. Basically, I love all the accents in English. I really do. But I would probably recommend received pronunciation as the one to go for, just because it's still a standard form of English, uh, British English. I know someone out there is thinking, but Luke, only 5% of English speakers use RP. Is it 5%, 2%? Only a small percentage of people actually use RP. Yes, that may be true, but I can't think of another accent except maybe estuary English, a sort of bit of a London accent, you know, estuary English maybe is uh, more people use that maybe, but not significantly, it's not a significantly larger number. Basically, yeah, okay, only 2%, 3% or 5% of people in the UK speak with received pronunciation like this, but, you know... Um, um, I can't think of another accent which is maybe more common, though. Okay, what am I trying to say? Um, let's consider pronunciation like a pie chart of accents. And each accent is um, a slice of the pie chart. What does that pie chart look like? There isn't really one accent that dominates that chart with a big piece, I expect. I, you know, I'm just speculating, really. Each segment in the chart is probably around the same size. If you've got received pronunciation, you know, a sort of southwest accent uh, or, um, you know, London accent, let's say, or Cockney or Estuary English, um, a sort of a West Midlands or Birmingham accent, um, Southern Welsh accent, Northern Welsh accent. I mean, I'm very, I'm probably being quite basic here. When you talk about accents, it's possible to keep subdividing and subdividing. There are many, 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 many different accents in the UK. Um, a Liverpool accent, a Lancashire accent, or a you know, Manchester accent, Yorkshire, different types of Yorkshire accent, uh, Newcastle, you know, there are all these different accents will take up parts of the pie chart. But I don't think that any one of those accents is really dominating. So why not choose RP? It's a perfectly decent um, accent to go for. I, I, and I don't mean that you should speak like a posh person. I don't think you should speak like the Queen or something because that would be weird. So just standard received pronunciation like the way I speak is probably a good thing to go for. But it's up to you. Um, also, there's another point to be made about listening and pronunciation. Um, listening for understanding others. So Yes. So you practice your listening to develop your your own pronunciation, right? But you also practice your your listening to develop your ability to understand other people that are talking. Okay? So, okay, so you could list let's say you've decided that received pronunciation is the accent you want. Okay? And I'm kind of assuming that that's true because that's what people tell me. Um and so great, listen to me and listen to you know other guests who speak like me and go for that. Uh, but don't forget the importance of listening, practicing your listening in order to understand other people. And you know, you've got to listen to people that you you've got to listen to a wide variety of different accents, even if those aren't accents you want to uh, acquire yourself, you still need to listen to them regularly in order to know what they sound like. Because if you only ever listen to people who speak like me, you'll, you will have a very narrow exposure to English. And as a result, you will only be able to un understand a very narrow portion of the English speakers in the world. Okay, next question. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> How do I pronounce your name, actually? That's what you might be asking. Well, it's Luke, Luke, Luke. Okay, Luke. Not luck, not look, not like. Luke, ooh, say it, ooh, 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 Luke. <laughs> you don't have to say that. That would be weird. If you're if you're on your own in your flat, going ooh, Luke, ooh, Luke, and you or you think you're on your own, ooh, Luke, and your boyfriend or girlfriend or mum or dad or something are going, what? What's? They can hear you in your bedroom, ooh, Luke, ooh, Luke. They're thinking, what are you doing in your bedroom? What are you doing? And you're just going, ooh, Luke, ooh. I'm practicing my pronunciation. Leave me alone. Anyway, ooh, Lou, ooh, Luke, Luke. Not la, not luck, not luck, Luke. And not like, and not look. 
It's not look. It's not look. It's Luke. I've said this a billion times. I said this in episode one of my podcast and in plenty of other episodes. Uh, Luke, and it's spelled L. How do I spell this so you can see it? L U K E E. Okay. Not L U C K. L U K E. And it's not Mr. Luke. It's Mr. Thompson. But you don't have to call me Mr. Thompson. Just call me Luke. And the name of my podcast, Luke's English Podcast. Okay. How, and you might be saying, how do I pronounce that last word? Podcast. Can you say it with me? Podcast. Some people say podcast, which is great too. Podcast, podcast. Okay. It can be difficult to say. It's not postcard. <laughs> not postcard. Okay. I might send you a postcard if I go on holiday. Having a lovely time. Wish you were here. Luke. Do you remember postcards? Anyway. Uh, P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Not P-O-T-C-A-T. That's a pot cat. I don't know what a pot cat is. A cat that likes pot? Maybe. Anyway. What sort of episodes can we expect from your podcast, Luke? This is for the new listeners again. So what you can expect is me talking on my own, talking about English and talking about learning English and strategies for doing it, specific things, not just some of the general stuff I've talked about in this episode so far. So there's that. Me talking about different topics. I love to get deep into different topics and they could be cultural topics about uh, the UK, British culture. I love to talk about British comedy, British music and British films. Not just British stuff. It's not just British, British, British. I'll talk about other types of, you know, films from the US and, you know, pop culture. I love talking about pop culture. You know, basically I want to get, I like to get deep into subjects and I want to talk about them in an interesting and engaging way in order to help you listen more and listen regularly and get more English in there and expose you to more English. Uh, Different topics. I have conversations with guests. Um, Some of those guests are my friends and family, and we might, oh, I don't know, we might talk about, there's so many things that, I talk about anything and everything, basically. I just try to make it engaging and interesting for you to, to listen to. Sometimes I do specific things about phrases, you know, like maybe phrasal verbs, or other bits of useful language, maybe grammar. Sometimes I do that in episodes. Uh, What other kinds of episodes do I do, listeners? I have episodes with my friends Amber and Paul, who are comedians, and we sometimes just talk and just have funny, stupid conversations. Sometimes we talk about different topics. Sometimes we play games, like speaking games and things like that. So many different things. I'm sure I'm forgetting um, episode types that I do. Uh, what else do I do? Uh, stupid rambling stories where I just make up the story as I go along um, and lots of other things. Dip into my episode archive to find out more. Teacherluke.co.uk. Click episodes in the menu. Um, it works best from a computer rather than a, from a mobile phone. If you're on a mobile phone, it's the Luke's English podcast app. That's the best way to do it. And just um, find the categories option on the side Uh, side menu in the app. LEP episodes is where most of the content is, and there are nearly 700 episodes now. But in the app as well, there are lots of other things. App-only episodes, like, you know, full-length episodes that are only available in the app. Phrasal verb episodes, like individual phrasal verb um, episodes, and it's like about 150 of those, um, where I teach you a different phrasal verb each time. Those episodes are short, and I get to the point in them unlike in some of my other content. (laughs) Um, What else? Videos and stuff in the app as well. Okay. Um, What are your favourite episodes, Luke? That's another question from you, potentially. Uh, I like... Oh, this is a difficult question, actually. I like to... I like... All episodes where I've got my friends and family, I love just talking to my friends and family and recording those conversations on the podcast, especially the ones where we're being funny. I don't know if we're funny all the time. That's for you to decide. But sometimes I think to myself, oh, I think that was a funny episode. I think people are going to laugh about that. They're going to enjoy that. And then people do write to me saying, you know, I laughed out loud on the bus listening to your podcast. That's always really nice. So I like the funny episodes. What else? 
Um, and episodes with my mum and dad because, you know, they're great and it's nice to be able to listen to them and record them and celebrate them in some way. And uh, Amber and Paul, it's always fun. Um, uh, I love analysing British comedy, taking clips of comedy, presenting to the presenting them to you and then analysing them, breaking them down. I do love doing that. I sort of feel so, so, uh, I'm so... Um, am I going to say passionate? Doesn't seem like the sort of word. I'm just so passionate about um, British comedy. I'm, I just love British comedy so much, and so I love sharing it with you. Even though a lot of the time, I think people don't understand it. It's difficult to understand sometimes. Comedy can be hard to understand in another language. Um, and I actually personally love those episodes where I make up stupid stories but I haven't done that for such a long time I need to get back into doing that it can be a lot of fun when it works next question you're on episode 699 of Luke's English podcast do you have anything special planned for episode 700 actually no I don't Um, I think it'll just be another episode this time I haven't really managed to work out what I'm going to do in episode 700 there are it's just been a lot going on and just like, oh God, I've got lots of things going on. And then suddenly episode 700 is here. I should probably do something special for it. Maybe I'll do a YouTube live stream like I did for episode 600. Maybe I can do a sort of ask me anything on YouTube again. Um, but that, I don't know when I can tell you, I don't know when that's going to happen if that does happen. You'll just have to subscribe to my YouTube channel And don't forget to smash that like button, okay, guys? And click the bell icon to get notifications. So if I do go live, you'll get a notification. Luke Thompson is going live now. Luke's English Podcast is live on YouTube. Or maybe I'll be able to create a post. Anyway, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If I do a, a live stream, ask me anything for episode 700, then you'll probably know that it's gonna happen. Uh, it's not always possible to to plan everything in advance. Um, okay, next question. What are Lepsters, Luke? Hello, Lepsters. What are Lepsters? A Lepster is someone who listens to Luke's English podcast. L-E-P means Luke's English podcast. So a Lepster is someone who listens to the podcast. Uh, next question. Where are your listeners? My listeners are all, all over the place. They're all over the world. Not all over the place. Like, uh, my listeners are all over the place. Like, drunk. Uh, poof, crashing into the furniture. Not that kind of all over the place. I mean, my listeners are all over the world. So they're in, you know, name a country. There's probably a listener there. At least one. Just one individual. Uh, I'm listening. Just one person there. No, but um, Japan, Russia, China. These are the top three countries. Also, the UK and the USA. I get lots of downloads in those places. Maybe that's native speakers who like just feel like they need to improve their English for some reason, or it's probably non-native, you know, people who are learning their improving their English, but they live in one of those countries, or it's maybe it's maybe government um, government spies just listening to my content. I don't know. Um, all around the world, just pick a country. There are lepsters are everywhere. There might be one there with you right now. Maybe you didn't realise it. It was like, wait a minute. Oh, there's a lepster just there. Maybe there's one behind your sofa. There could be anywhere. Um, next question. Why do you talk about ninjas sometimes? What are LEP ninjas? Excuse me. I'm just gonna, I just feel like I need to wipe my nose. I do apologise for any kind of bodily, body-related issues like coughing, sniffing, wiping my nose, any of those sorts of things, I do apologise. Also, I'd like to apologise for any time in the past when on the podcast I sneezed or coughed and I didn't say excuse me. I was listening to an old episode the other day. I was working on an old episode. I'm I'm trying to do things with some of the old episodes. Uh, Anyway, I was listening back to an old episode and I sneezed and I didn't say excuse me. I'm so terribly sorry to everyone in the world for doing that. (laughs) I know that that sounds ridiculous, but Some people really don't like it if you sneeze or cough and you don't say excuse me, especially on in in audio like this. Um, So LEP ninjas. Ninjas are my listeners who only listen and they never do anything else. They never get in touch. They never leave a comment. I don't know where they are. I don't know who they are. They are just, well, I know where they are because I've got that in my statistics. I know where you are, but I just don't know who you are. Um... 
I don't know who they are. They're just numbers. I just have numbers of downloads, but I don't know anything else. And, you know, just like, who are you people? Where are you? And they're just ninjas, you know, hiding in the shadows, just listening on headphones. That's what I mean when I say LEP ninjas. Listeners who never really get in touch. They're just out there somewhere listening. Next question. Can you explain the Russian joke, please? Uh, no. No, I can't. Next question. What do you think of Brexit, Luke? Is it a bad idea? Um, yes, I think it is a bad idea. I think it was basically an opportunity for a bunch of nutters to take control of my country and push it in a different direction. And I think it's, it, it, I think it's the wrong direction. But now we have to live with it and we have to make it work. I'm not a fan of Boris Johnson. Uh, Boris Johnson and uh, his messy hair. I'm not a fan of Boris Johnson. Bah! And his gang of people. I feel that they're doing a bad job. That's probably enough politics, isn't it? There. All right. Oops. Sorry. I nearly slipped, didn't I, on politics there. Nearly slipped up on a bit of politics. Watch out, everyone. There's some politics on the floor just there. Okay. Can someone clean that up, please? Watch out for the politics. <sighs> Smells a bit as well, doesn't it? Ugh. So, um, anyway. So, no, I don't like Brexit. There you go. I mean, maybe you think Brexit's wonderful. Can you explain why? And don't just say, oh, you're taking back control. Um and because uh, are we really? It doesn't seem like it. it. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't smell like it. Anyway, sorry, no politics. I talked to my dad on the podcast about Brexit. He he is very knowledgeable, well informed, and well spoken. So he's the ideal person to talk to about Brexit. And yes, listeners, there will be an episode of the Rick Thompson Report coming very soon. I'm just you know emerging from my from my illness that I was suffering from last week emerging from christmas emerging from the new new year and just like blinking into the light like oh hello world hello podcast so once i've got my stuff together i will be talking to my dad and i'll also be talking to winners of the wispolep competition as well at some point um I've got more to say about that as well. Some other podcasters. Daniel Goodson, who does uh, My Fluent Podcast. That's the name of the podcast. My Fluent Podcast. Daniel Goodson is a lepster who, um, you know, he listens to this podcast. That's why he's a lepster. Uh, and he's got a podcast. It's called My Fluent Podcast. He's been interviewing some of the 85 people who didn't get into the final. And they're, they, they're really good good and really interesting and I highly recommend that you listen to them. I must, I'm going to say that more explicitly and clearly at the beginning of a new episode soon. I just need to get myself together and work out all the things I need to announce. I've got to stay on target here. Right, listeners? Stay focused, Luke, for goodness sake. Okay. We're into the section of the episode, near the end now. We're nearly done now. Um, I'm just telling you some things about myself. Do you need to know these things? I don't know. Um, so next question is, do you have a team of people who help you to do this? Do you have a team of people who help you to do this? Who do you work with? Sometimes I get emails from listeners who saying, say things like this, dear Luke, or whoever is reading this email, or dear Luke, or who, you know, whoever is in, in the teacherluke.co.uk team. I don't have a team. It's just me. <laughs> um, the idea of employing other people, I mean, that, that would be a professional thing to do, but I'm not really at that stage yet. But anyway, no, it's just me. I do all of this. It's just me on my own. Um, I get moral support from my friends and family and my listeners. I get tremendous levels of encouragement from my audience, which is always a wonderful thing. But in terms of just who's pulling the strings and doing the work, yeah, it's all me. It's just me. I'm the only one doing this. No team, no assistants, nothing. Um Next question. Can we see you perform stand-up comedy on stage? Uh, because you're a stand-up comedian, aren't you, Luke? A person who goes up on stage with a microphone. And, hello, I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm going to try and make you all laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Right? I'm a stand-up comedian. Uh, yeah, you can see me performing on stage. Uh, well, you will be able to see me performing on stage when it's possible again. Because, obviously, because of COVID-19... Um, that's just not possible, is it? So all the comedy clubs are, are shut at this stage, and so no stand-up comedy is happening. 
it's all on hold. It's all on ice at the moment. It's been a while. It feels like it's been a long time since I've been on stage doing comedy. I hope I can remember how to do it. If you're a premium Lepster, there is a video of about 28 minutes of me doing stand-up comedy at the Comedy Store in London. So if you really want to see me doing a stand-up comedy show, become a premium subscriber and check out, is it P26? Okay, premium 26. And that's a stand-up comedy video from me to you um, for your entertainment. Next question. Are you married and do you have kids and stuff? What do you mean, and stuff? <laughs> um, I guess you mean like proper family life responsibilities and things. Yes, I'm married. I'm married to my wife. There's a surprise. Uh, I'm married to my wife, yes. And uh, we've been married for over five years now. And, um, you know, I love her because she's my wife. Not because she's my... I loved her before she was my wife as well. Uh, but anyway, yes. She's on the podcast occasionally. Uh, she's French. Her English is good. And so they, there's that. I live in France, by the way. Um, I used to live in London, but I moved to France in order to be together with my, uh, with my then girlfriend. It was very romantic. I'm a very romantic person. Am I? I don't know. Uh, and yes, we have a daughter. She's three years old and she's great. So there you go. Uh, she's great when she's not... When, she, when she's great. When Sometimes she's not great. When, 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 Luke, when's she not great? I don't know. When she's crying. That's not great, is it? Uh, not a lot of insight there, Luke. You're not giving anything away there, are you? No, I'm not really. She's on the podcast too, occasionally, my daughter, talking about things that she likes. Right, come on, snap, get, get moving, Luke. Luke, what's your favourite football team? I don't really have a favourite football team. Um, I know that's that, that doesn't work. You're not allowed to say that. You have to pick a team. I don't really have a team. I moved around a lot when I was a kid and never stayed in one place. And so I never kind of stuck with one particular team. Um, but I do have a soft spot for Liverpool. And that's not because they're doing well at the moment. I've always just liked Liverpool. Uh, I used to live in Liverpool. I lived there for four years um, when I was at university. I lived not far from the Liverpool football ground. Also, I lived not far from the Everton football ground. So I could like Everton. I do like Everton as well. But I have a soft spot for Liverpool. So does my dad. Um, also, because I like Jurgen Klopp, their current manager. Um, I think he's a good thing. And I like the way they play football. And yes, so I like Liverpool. It's, it helps that they're doing well. I'm not a glory hunter. I don't just like them because they're doing well, but I also like them for other personal reasons. Uh, but I love football. I love, I'm a supporter of the game. Um, I'm not a supporter of, of footballers jumping on the floor, pretending to be injured. I mean, I can't stand that. It's, it's pathetic, isn't it? Uh, but I do love the game of football and uh, I like playing it too when I can, which is basically never these days. Uh, next question. Do you like music, Luke? Do you play music? Do you have any songs stuck in your head today? I do like music. I love music. I love listening to music as much as possible. I'm a huge fan of The Beatles, as you may know, but I love loads of other bands and other types of music as well. I just happen to be obsessed by the Beatles more and more all the time. I've been listening to the Beatles ever since I was a little kid. Um, but yes, love the Beatles and lots of other bands. Uh, I do play music. Um, I first learnt piano when I was about 11, from 11 to about 15 or 16, just around the time that I started discovering other things like girls and, and being in bands and things. And suddenly learning classical piano for an hour every day became less interesting for me. But I first started playing the piano, can't really play anymore. Then I moved to playing the drums because we were lucky enough to have a drum kit. My dad bought a drum kit for James, my brother, and me. And uh, it was kind of in the garage. And, you know, so I, I was able to play drums all the time. So I'm a drummer. That's, like I guess, the, the main instrument that I do. But I don't have drums these days. I never get the chance to play drums these days. So instead, I play guitars, bass guitar. Um, if you're watching the video, you'll see a bass guitar on the wall behind me. That is a Fender, uh, a Mexican-made Fender P bass. Um, thank you to the people of Mexico for making it. Not that you all made it. That would be, imagine if everyone 
worked together to make this. And I'm saying thank you. you. You didn't send it to me. I mean, it wasn't a gift from the government of Mexico. Thank you for improving the English of my people. It wasn't that. I bought it myself with my own money. But anyway, it was made in Mexico. I've also got an acoustic guitar. I've got several. I, if it was... If, if it was up to me, I would spend all my money on guitars and I'd just get more and more of them. I'm not particularly brilliant. I, I, bass, I think, is pro I'm probably more skillful on bass. I don't know, I just find it a bit more, a bit easier. Maybe my hat's because my hands are big. Maybe it's because I'm a drummer and bass is a bit more of a rhythmical instrument. I don't know. Uh, guitar, I am working on it. I'm practicing. I love playing. I love trying to sing, but I'm not the world's greatest or the world's worst. Uh, guitarist or singer. Do I have any songs stuck in my head today? Yes, I've got loads. Of, I've always got a song stuck in my head. You might It might be the same for you. We call it an earworm. If you have an earworm, it means it's a song stuck in your head. When I was ill uh, last week, I was like lying in bed, trying to sleep, feeling bad, but I had lots of music running through my head. And the earworms that I've had recently are all by the same group, and they're called the Other Favourites. I've just discovered them fairly recently. They're brilliant. Check out the other favourites. And I've had the song Angelina running around in my head for ages. It's a brilliant song. They are really impressive. Um, the other favourites, Angelina. Check it out. Next question is, can you sing songs for us on the podcast sometimes? Yes, I can. I do that occasionally when I feel inspired to do it. I'm not the greatest singer or the greatest guitarist, as I said just now. I'm just learning, but I love it and I feel moved to do it. If I do sing in an episode, most of the time I do it right at the end of the episode so that people who might not like it don't feel obliged to listen to it. But the ones who like hearing my versions of other people's songs, and usually I do cover versions, those people can listen and hopefully enjoy hearing me. I always make an effort to sing clearly so you can hear all the words of the song. I also don't use any reverb to cover up the imperfections in my voice or guitar playing. I just get the guitar on my lap, point the microphone somewhere between the guitar and my mouth, and I do my best. Um... There's more questions. You know what, listeners and viewers? I don't have enough time. I'm I, I've, I'm keeping an eye on the clock. I've got to go out and do some errands. I've got to go to the bank and do something at the bank. I've got to go and pick up uh, uh, a cake that my wife ordered today. And I've got to go and get my daughter from school. So I've got about five minutes left. One of the questions was, are you on YouTube? The answer to that is pretty much yes. Just go to YouTube, search for Luke's English Podcast on YouTube. Um, one of the things I do is I upload my audio episodes. So this is an audio podcast, first and foremost. I do videos sometimes, like the video that I'm hoping to produce for this episode. But first and foremost, this is a an audio podcast. But I like to upload the audio episodes onto YouTube with just a single static image. And... Uh, the reason for that is that so that people can, well, first of all, a lot of people like to listen on YouTube, YouTube, maybe when they're working or just at their computer, they, it just is convenient for lots of people, but also automatic subtitles. I always add automatic subtitles on the videos. YouTube sometimes just goes, no, I don't know why. Sometimes they just never appear. I don't know why that is, but I always add them. And uh, the automatic subtitles are pretty good because they're about, you know, 95% accurate, especially when I'm on my own. Um, okay, but anyway. So yeah, check out my YouTube channel. Um, I'm also working on some new video content coming soon, which is basically like clips of old episodes, little clips, some, some like little moments from previous episodes that I will, that I'm working on turning into videos. And you'll see me uploading some of those things um, in the coming weeks and months. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm looking at breaking the 100,000 subscribers um, mark on YouTube soon. Um, I'm, a, I'm at about 83,000. And when I get to 100,000, they send me, they will send me a thing, a glass thing with a platinum YouTube logo in the middle. Oh, I want that, please. Yes, please. So help me get to 100,000 subscribers by subscribing to my YouTube channel. Have I forgotten anything? Yes, I'm certain that I've forgotten to mention something really important. But I mean, I've been blabbering on, rambling on for like an hour and 20 minutes now. Um, still, I mean, 
something really important. It's not that important. It's just the sort of thing that when I'm out and about and I'm getting emails from people, you know, asking me questions, it's like, oh, damn, I forgot to mention that. Not that, I mean, a lot of people will have stopped listening to this. If you are still watching or listening to this, then good for you. You are a wonderful person. Um, those people who stopped listening or stopped watching ages ago, what a bunch of losers, right? Uh, but you're still here. Well done, you. Um, okay, I, I, what I want to say is this. Yes, I ramble quite a lot. Uh, sometimes I talk too much and I repeat myself a bit. I do. So what? Sue me. To, but to paraphrase Shakespeare, there is a method in my madness. Okay? Um, I've said it before and I will say it again. That, act that quote actually from Shakespeare, it comes from Shakespeare's Hamlet. Um, Shakespeare's Hamlet, not anyone else's Hamlet. Uh, which was um, 1602. The actual line from the play is... Though this be madness, yet there is method in it. Okay. So basically, at the end of this episode, this rambling episode, where I've welcomed you in, back into my podcast, saying maybe for, for, for long-term listeners, you've probably heard all this before. I hope you don't mind. Uh, new, brand new stuff is coming soon, I promise. But the main message I want to give you here is this. Listen to my episodes regularly and enjoy doing it. I hope you enjoy it. Download my app to get easy access to all the episodes on your phone. And that's there's more episodes in the app than, than there are in Spotify or, in fact, anywhere else. Or on my website, you can check the episode archive there. Become a premium listener if you want to go further in your learning with me, teacherluke.co.uk slash premium info. And don't be a ninja. Come out of the shadows sometimes and write a comment from time to time on my website. That's the best place to do it. But that's it. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast, listeners. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. I didn't cough too much. That's good. But thank you for listening or watching, if you're watching this on YouTube. Happy New Year to you all. Take care and be excellent to each other. And I'll speak to you again next time. But for now, it's just time to say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.